Hi everyone, I am going to put a disclaimer out. I'm on the gimbal again. I've tried to calibrate it properly so it doesn't pick up my pulse and I hope it's going to do well. Sorry for the flashing lights in the background. It's been a gloomy, rainy day, finally. And I've needed to put some of the lights on in the back for my seedlings that are being babied. But here we're looking at my first bloom of the season of my Gloriosa Lily. And welcome to a tour of the outside of my patio where most of my orchids are now located. And another disclaimer is I'm not on a mic. I cannot fit a mic onto the phone in order to film. And I don't have a separate mic that clips onto the gimbal. So we're going to do the best we can. But isn't she pretty? This is going to be good. And I only thought I had one tuber coming out. The one that's blooming now. But nope. I have two more that have actually sprouted, which is great. I'm really happy about that. Look at it. There's the bulge right here. And the growth is over there. But I don't see any more tubers coming out. I had five, six in here. I had six in here. Three, that's not so bad. I will know for next year, next winter, to take out the tubers and store them separately so they don't go and rot on me. Let's have a look-see because I need to be touching some leaves. Monsieur? Okay, so my vandas are out here, and uh, well, the stands, and I've brought my pandurata out. It's been a very cloudy morning, so everybody is here, got in a soak, just making sure now that the sun has come out, that the leaves are going to be holding on okay, so I don't have to move everything again. What a shuffle it has been. So the two stands have gotten a drench, pandurata as well. And there's Zygonesia, which is growing a new growth, if the shadow won't. There we go. Got a new growth, which is great, and it does need a repot. But I'm going to wait and hold off until the new roots come. And then here I've got my Brassavolas all hanging around, having had a soak as well. After eight days of manana, it's going to rain. Manana, it's going to rain. It rained this morning, finally. So I'm just going to jump in because if I don't do this now, I won't be able to show the end of April tour of the grow areas. And I hope that regardless of maybe bad sound or maybe the gimbal vibrating a bit because of my pulse, this thing makes me nervous. <laughs> and it's supposed to be a pleasure to film with it. And I've been practicing with all the little functions and stuff. So I'm hoping to get it right. But yeah, van der Leopard John doing well. Hanging out in the sun. So let's move on because I have my summer bloomers over here. And I need to be touching leaves to make sure that... They don't heat up, especially this one here, my sweet memory. Look, first sweet memory bloom, hello, on new spikes that grew over the winter. That is so cool. Yes, that's the first one. The other spikes I'm not so sure about. I will do a video about that. If I get more gloomy rainy days, I've got something in mind to make sure that I get my video logs all into the schedule without getting a backlog. I'll make sure that the leaves are okay. I had to put my Violacea underneath. Those leaves were already getting a bit too warm for my liking. Everybody got rained on and I don't know when the rain started but I woke up to it which is great so I think we're going to be okay while we walk around and have more of a look-see as to what is going on. They still feel cool, so that's the thing. As soon as I feel a little bit of temperature increase in the 
feel and touch of the leaf, they go out of the sun. Maybe this one, just to be on the safe side. Let's put you down here for now. And I've been cleaning masks, one after the other. I've been meaning to collect rain, but yesterday I did not get around to cleaning all the masks. There was no point in collecting rain in dirty masks. Here is Masai Red, also with a shower. I cleaned out the outer mask of that pot. There is no water in there for the time being. According to the forecast, we're expecting more rain. If they are wrong again, then fertilized water goes in, but it was a little bit too full for my liking for my Masai Red. At least that mask is now clean. We got Cousin It down here. More clean masks, all shiny in the way they are supposed to be. Took me about three hours for the stash that I did today. Letia and my Jumelia here. They're fine, absolutely fine. Waiting for my Peggy Ruth Carpenter to show me signs of roots. I gotta check that mask actually. She might be sitting on water. But all the new growths are coming, so it'll be go time to split her up uh, when those roots show. And Bossery hanging out, as is Crestwood Tomorrow Star. Looking great. They were in their element overnight. And here I brought out two of my Cattleya seedlings for the first time that they were ever, ever exposed to rain, but doing good. Really good. Video coming up about them. Plectral Minthus caudatus. I like how that root there is curving. And hopefully it'll find its way back into the pot. That would be nice. And Kimmy, as per usual. Great root tips here now. Loving it, loving it. I brought out uh, Ceratostylis philippinensis as well to get some rain. I think there's enough humidity to keep her out of the dome for now. And I brought out Didieri as well, also to get some rain. Uh, if the spike doesn't make it because I've moved it from inside to outside, that's fine. I find it a lot more important to get some good rainwater on them. Okay, let's go to the west side. And if the breeze is picking up on that mic, my profound apologies. This is impromptu, but I want to get a grip, pun intended, on this gimbal. Let's go over here, where I have Victoria Regina. Hopefully it did get some rain. Sometimes I have to check on them, because depending on the angle of the rain, maybe they do not get rained on, and then I skip a day thinking they've been watered, but they haven't. Look at this, though. Oh my goodness, love, love how it's responding in my climate. And then, here's little rainbow forest. Too many freckles because of afternoon sun, so now I have to bring it under the blooming alley and hang it into the archways, just not to stress it out. But the roots, the roots are growing. Who we are getting roots. And all these cleaned out masks. I want to put them and spread them out on the terrace so that they can catch rain. I just can't have the wind. The wind was blowing them around yesterday, so I can't do that. And then I have to watch that a puppy doesn't think it's a toy. <laughs> Exile is also exposed to the rain, as is my Ionopsis popcorn haruri. Recently repotted Lobata is all out here, Hibiki, and Aurantiflameum. And this one, I keep forgetting its name because it was not what I bought, but it's the Lori Mortimer. There we go. It's just come back to me. Touch the leaves. Ah, you're fine. You're fine. Ooh, still cool. Here's my little Zelemnia Midas. It's in recovery. Same situation as with my Tolumnias. I thought I would be growing a Vanda as opposed to a Zelemnia, and I was nuking the roots. We're getting a spike though, which is nice. But unfortunately, I knocked the second spike off. So I suppose that's a sign of a good thing anyway, because it does need to recover. I'm being selfish letting this bloom out. 
but I want to see those beautiful golden blooms as well. My Darwinara blue is super dark with anthocyanin. Not quite comfortable about that, but somehow this one is picking up light like there is no tomorrow. So into the shade, we have to go a lot. Beautiful root coming though. I like it and I like the angle as it's going down. <laughs> Very important. That's why I have not removed the moss. Humidity on the surface of the pot to bring those roots down and into the pot as opposed to, sorry, just bumped the gimbal as opposed to this happening. All right, orange nugget. Took the spike off and here is my Parkinsonianum. I've got to make sure on the back side. Yeah, there, that's fine. That's an older leaf. That's okay. Everything's fine here, but check out. Let me see if I can get my gimbal to behave. Let's check Holdenii. That's fine. My, look at the root of, sorry about that, <laughs> of my Parkinsonianum. Doing really well, I would say, and it's still viable. Cool, cool, cool. Coming straight through. Who'd have thought? All right, I'm going to back up now and see if I can do it gracefully with the gimbal helping me. Still got to tweak it a little bit. Still working on that. Dennis Oniana, very pleased about this rain. They've already dried off. But the spikes are looking okay. The spikes in there are looking okay. Blast it, there's an ant. Got to get rid of ants. A ants right now are my nemesis. I don't mind ants. I usually love them, but right now they are getting on my nerves. Ta-da! It has been served. <laughs> yes, so all of these have gotten a flush. Well, rain. Yesterday I flushed some because I've been waiting for rain for over a week now and it was never, it never manifested itself. So while they were on the table, I just flushed them through. But I've got a new growth coming on my pastoral innocence right there. I wonder when I'm going to see a bloom. The last sheath was blind, so hopefully that's a good sign and it'll bloom next time. Ampuyathea is slowly coming to the end, hoping for some root activity soon. And check out my little Neo Stylus Lusneri Blue, what the funky spike has done. Funky, funky, curly, curly. Usually it would stop and then just frazzle out like it's doing here. But I have a few blooms that came out okay. Beautiful hologram effect on these blooms. Absolutely love this orchid, even though it's giving me some troubles. And then some funky blooms on the bottom. So I have not fertilized this orchid since we had a look at it the last time. But isn't that, that's why I'm holding on to her. That hologram effect. <laughs> All right. What else is going on on this table? A clandier, got a flush, little seedling of, what are you, tenuis. You see, when I move my orchids away from where they normally are, I also have another problem that my photographic memory, now I have to look at the tags because normally I can rattle them off. But here is tenuis. It doesn't normally live on the table, but when I redistribute it, oops, who are you again? <laughs> Here's my Dimophorcus lowii. Very pleased. Finally, I think we've got this one on the road to growing the way it should. Don't have any more leaf drop and no more leaf tip burn either. What else? Oh yes, here's my Panarica. This is the Brassavole. And look at that. All those new roots coming. The embryos of new growths. There's two of them right there. The sheaths are probably blind at the moment, but this is great. Good timing, new roots, rain, bring it. And here's my Velotina, 
also growing new roots. And because that is so perched on that Lekka bead, I'm coming back around with a sprayer and I will spray that down so there's no drying off. I need that root. And I don't think there's more root nubbins coming. They are so tiny. So more root nubbins, which is fantastic because this little Velatina is precious to me. Oh, well, they all are precious to me, but you know, you have the ones in sight and just hope that they do well for you. Who else is coming up with new growths? You are coming up with a new growth right here. That's Coolio. And let me not forget, you are Chunya Good Life. So there's that. My Perinii, my Lelia Perinii, that's early. That growth is super early. Normally it doesn't happen until June. And then it takes off like a rocket and blooms and then it blooms are gone. So this growth is early. Very pleased to see I have another nubbin right there. Now that would be something if it were to produce two new growths for me this year. That would be something. Oh, gotta watch it. Gotta watch it. Where am I? Gotta watch it. Look. Francis Fox, the spike is still progressing. Woohoo! And then we have Golf Green. The front division is also producing roots now. Very pleased. It's not quite stable in the pot, but I thought a good dose of rain would do it good, just as much as my encyclia here. The Garciana Alba that we repotted into this big bowl and pretty much Akadama only to avoid these concertina leaves here. I lost some blooms because of the repot, which was a shame. This sheath didn't continue. It just frazzled. But there are some more coming out now. Gorgeous powdery talcum fragrance. All right, watching out for doggy toys. Plectromynthus caudatus. Happy to see that it's doing okay. Or Orsteriae, right here. All the growths are progressing. Haven't lost one since. And here's my Tibicinus. I had a massive, gluey, goopy substance of, because of bugs, on these leaves out here. Look, you see that? Yeah, yuck. So I come with a sprayer and uh, keep those clean. And despite the rain, they're back. Very, very, that's why they're called pests, because they're pesky pests. And then here is my Tenebrosa Aurea. I'm seeing new roots. Sorry about that. Whoop. That's awesome. Great. There's an eye back here. I hope I would like to see that develop. And then Sunya Green here. Uh, no new growth, a nubbin swelling there, but okay. And Ancelia Africana as well. There's still no activity on that one. All right, moving on, moving on. Let me show you. Oh, this is awesome. I can, I can pan without jiggling. Here we have Catlianthi, little fairy. I hope it forgives me and does better this year with a clean pot. Luminosa is right now pretty much chill, except for some root production. And yes, this is old Lekka, and it is extremely, it was dirty at the time, what I call dirty Lekka, because I didn't give it time to leach when the orchids were coming in quickly, order after order. So this one is going to need to be addressed simply because I want to exchange it with well-leached Lekka and clean up that root system, even though I'm expecting it to be great because this is all new roots from last year. So we've managed to hold on to some and not burn them off. There's a root tip in there. So I'm very, very cautious about this one and I spray it regularly with RO water only. And the rack here looks pretty empty. Now let me let go of that one function and see what happens. Hey, nothing happens. Perfect. Up there, catacetums are waking up. 
video pending. If it can, becomes a rainy day, I can do that one indoors. And then here, the ones I really don't want to expose to rain is my durigan because of this insane, gorgeous growth. I'm very cautious. Yes, we have a lot of airflow, but these tight joints on these growths, <laughs> very cautious about actually exposing them to rain. The same with my Sagarik Wax African Beauty. Not as big a growth from the structure wise as I remember last year, but then she did get divided and needed some roots, etc. So not expecting much out of her this year, but that's why I'm protecting this new growth and she's not getting any rain. And here as well, my Verkhoisri Estriata, or Striata, the one we just saw in the care collab. Very cautious about this growth right here. I would love to see the blooms on this one and see if it has anything to do with the labeling being wrong or not and comparing to the previous blooms I've had from my other Lelias. Also quite wary of this sheath down here not getting too gooey with the happy sap and rotting my new growth off. So I'm going to come in after this little tour and peel that away. The happy sap, high humidity in the air, wet condition down there, even though it's not exposed to the rain. Trouble, could be trouble, but I think it's going to be okay. And then back here is my Dinard Blue Heaven, also protecting that new growth. Right, let's move down another little shelf. Right, and here is my Spathilufera, and it is growing a new growth. Now the sun's gone back in, but there it is. I hope you can see that. Yeah, I'll only know what editing, but there is a new growth in there. I had my Maitsuru taking in some of the spa-like rain, but don't want to overdo it because seeing as it's not an active growth, it'll just get a rain shower and now it's back to it's getting a little bit more protected and a drier conditions. Never do I let that reservoir go empty, but it doesn't need continuous rain at this stage of its growth either. And the random hibiki keiki got rained on, and I have not let anything rain on my sutik noing because of that tiny little growth, and I need this growth at least to develop nicely and give me some new roots. That is importante, so no rain on that one. And the same for the little seedlings back here. No rain on my Maxima Alba. Precious one from the Orchid Room, Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. Look at the size of that growth. Hey, hey, we are in the next phase. Beautiful. No rain happening here. And no rain on my little Dawiana Aurea either because I have more important things to worry about with that little new growth. That is a must. So that's why all of these are still on the rack. Now we can go to the blooming alley and just wrap this up real quick. Before we do that, just one thing. Here are my fires blooms. Magnificent from afar. But then when you're getting closer, look at the blemishes. Look at that. And that is a combination of me spraying the blooms and the buds to keep the aphids off of them. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. And this is what I've been spraying off every day, several times a day. And thank you for clearing all of that up. Black bean aphids, if I remember correctly now. Oh goody, I've never had this problem before. You think you've nailed one issue? Nope. Here comes the next one. Oh yes. But you know, from afar, they look impressive. And 
they are super super long <laughs> i think about a meter 30 in length so yeah that's why i've been extremely protective of my fire spikes but when you look at them like this they look beautiful and i love them not fragrant okay let's meander over to the blooming alley and see what's going on oh <clears throat> there will be blooms coming I'm far off but my aphyllum is starting to open and my cerola here yikes gorgeous look at all those buds there <laughs> fantastic okay more wind I hope this isn't catching on the mic again apologies if it does all right let's pan over looking a little bare at the moment they're all over the place all my orchids are not where they should be but still there's enough here to keep me busy and it gives me a little bit more space to do some flushing of everybody take out the big pots check them out and check this out Ooh, Guatemalensis is a go. Despite that cleanup and a pot. Yep, those sheaths are on the way with, and they're looking pretty impressive and abundant. Super pleased. Now it just remains to be seen whether they will be as impressive as they were when I first got them or better. You know, always a little bit wary about potting up with sheaths after seeing what my maxima did my cg roebling here check this out boom what a growth and the one on the left there hasn't stopped but this one is just kicking it fantastic and i have a spike as well on a cross that i can't reach the tag now because of the way the gimbal is behaving but there is a spike somewhere where are you over here can i get at it let's see can you see eh. there that's a gorgeous spike coming got to be careful i don't lose it against the trellis and I, i'll put a pop-up as to which one that belongs to so that's amazing it'll only have three buds but i have to be careful because it's cutting right up against that trellis and my little nobly no rain for that i want to enjoy the blooms but it's coming along no pests that i can see so far i've been spraying it with garlic alcohol i don't want any growths taken out because of mealybugs like last year so keeping an eye on things even if they are not exposed to rain Whew. all right and here is my orange nugget and I can tell you that the first seed pollinating thing did not work and I pollinated another one and I don't remember which one but I tried another bloom just to see if that would work but this works and I'll have to do a video on all the updates on who did what when have they managed have they survived this bloom is about to go but that one worked. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? To have that still intact while the bloom is faded. Oh, I love orchids. Love orchids. And then here I have my pseudoepidendrum. Also finally, finally doing something. This is important. Very important. I need to clean this pot up, but without new roots coming, I will not touch it. It has been a stalled setback, and you name it, Orchid. So, yeah, very happy to see this coming. Roy Tokonaga is still doing great. Video coming about that. My Maxima, not so much, was spent. Didn't last very long, this spike. That's fine. Now you can start with some new growths. Good boy. And here I still have that spike in the back. It's okay. 
It wasn't the best blooming, but it was beautiful to see again nonetheless and smell this divine rose fragrance. And when we're looking at it, look at this. Isn't this just a sight? My Ensfelsiae lasted forever. First bloom has just dropped. Second bloom's about to go. But goodness me, Harpophila is still pristine. <laughs> this has been blooming since January. Absolutely amazing. I am impressed. I'm obsessed with this little orchid. And so is Golden Peacock, an obsession. Look at that. Wow. But for now, this, even though the blooms are fading of the maxima, this image here with the sun shining on the tortile, yeah, this is just pure pleasure. It was a bit of a long one. I hope that you enjoyed the tour. Regardless, I do apologize. I don't like to do part one, part two. Let me know in the comments if that is something that you would prefer. Then I will divide these outdoor tours up into sections. But quick look around, end of April. Can you believe it? End of April. Wow. Yeah, I won't go with what my nan said, but I'm starting to agree with her. <laughs> oh, one more thing before I love and leave you. Check this out. Second flush of Tetragonum. Look at that. That bloom has been out quite some time and the growth from last year's second flush is now. And here is another bloom coming as well. I hope you can see that there. So before any new growth, Tetragroma is going to provide some more blooms. But back to this beautiful spectacle and just say thank you so very much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. And I hope that you have yourselves a wonderful day. And please take care and stay safe. Bye.